Look around you. So much of our modern world is new. New ideas, new buildings, new narratives. And that's great. Change is necessary for progress. The whole world gets it. So how is it possible that despite all this progress, we still learn in the exact same way our grandparents did? Our education is evolving so slowly. But why? What if your education could evolve and improve as quickly as the world around us does? What if your education was designed to help you discover who you really are? If students were created like co-creators instead of just products? If there was a space meant to build connections between teachers and students? A place where safe space doesn't mean you'll be shielded by censorship. Where liberty isn't just what you learn, but how. Your education should keep up with the rest of the world. And now, it can. Hi. Today's conversation is about how to build a country from scratch in the 21st century. To help us to learn about the experience of Liberland, located between Croatia and Serbia, and proclaimed in 2015, we have with us the president of that free republic, President Vit Jedlička. Welcome, Mr. President. Let me start this presentation by a quote by Mark Skousen. Uh, the taxation is the price we pay for failing to build a civilized society. We have decided at some point in 2013 with my friend uh, that basically it doesn't really make sense to, to fight the system from within when we were trying to build a more free society in Czech Republic. That uh, after this experience that we had uh, from the political process, we realized that even if we won the majority, in that political system, there was very little we could change uh, because there are so many interests that are already built into the society and people are actually demanding the, the welfare state, a high taxation in a way, and, and all the bureaucracy that comes with it. And at some point we realized there is probably 1% of the people around the world that actually want to live in a free society that really has a, a demand to, to build something new from scratch and at the time we were started looking for options what can we do how can we start a new country based on these principles especially the principles of voluntary taxes and uh, we, we found many places which could be used but at some point uh, my friend Yeri actually sent me a link uh, to a beautiful place between Croatia and Serbia that was unclaimed by any country for more than 28 years and as you might know, uh, the territory is one of the preconditions for establishing a country. So there are these Montevideo criteria, uh, which when you start your own country uh, would need to fulfill. And the territory is probably the toughest one, as the world has been basically claimed by many different actors, many different countries uh, by now. And it also, you know, feels kind of in interesting when you think about it, that, you know, these freest places like Liechtenstein, like Monaco, like Singapore are actually very, very little places at the end. Uh, they, they are uh, surrounded by much bigger countries, but everybody wants to live in there, right? Like Monaco, there is uh, only uh, basically uh, one square kilometer or, or two and a half square kilometers at the end of the land. Uh, for example, Liechtenstein is, is not much bigger it's around 100 square kilometers. So these places end up to be very rich just by applying a simple rule. Uh, basically, they were providing better and freer jurisdictions. And at that point, we decided we also want to build our own country, we want to be a good example of how other countries could run themselves. And we also felt it's the right time for it because we have the time of the cryptocurrencies, uh, of the decentralization, uh, and we felt that this is exactly the time when something uh, which was never actually done before, building a country from scratch uh, without any bloodshed or without any big conflict could be done. Um, so 
we were looking, we found the territory, we decided uh, we're going for it. We built a website uh, where people could sign up. Uh, we were expecting that probably 20,000 people will sign up for the citizenship. After we pro proclaimed the country, I decided to go together with my wife and with my friend and with one journalist. Uh, we went to the territory, we stick the flag and there was enormous interest in Liberland. Right away, I think I received roughly half a million emails, which was impossible to reply to. We were barely managed to reply to the journalist in those early months of Liberland. And we also received probably half a million applications for the citizenship at the time. And we didn't even have a proper application process. It took us almost two weeks uh, to build that. And right after that, we received some 250,000 applications for citizenship through the regular process. And it was amazing. Uh, you know, there was this huge push by the world media, uh, which happened right after the creation of Liberland, uh, all the big press agencies, including the you know, CNN, Russia Today, uh, have informed about the creation of Liberland. And we were kind of lucky in a sense that uh, the media really at the time uh, fully supported that that uh, no, no matter what the ideology behind the country was, the fact that we have found, found a piece of no man's land in Europe was a, a very interesting fact for them. Uh, so I started to gather the team of people to build Liberland with me. And of course, it's not easy to build a society from scratch. Uh, so in the last five years, um, five, almost six years now, we have put a, together a very strong team of people uh, and that's another point uh, which is very important when you start your own country. You actually need to have diplomacy with other countries. That means you have to have people that are able to open up these diplomatic channels. And I'm happy that, uh, for example, our Secretary of State is also representative of British Queen. So it opens us a lot of doors into the world of diplomacy. And I'm happy that we actually got, um, we started with recognition of, of country like Somaliland uh, two and a half years ago when we visited them, which also has a very interesting status. It's a, it's a story of its own. Uh, so that was our first bigger step in diplomacy. We got now a couple more countries to, to follow up on the recognition process, which is very exciting. But I think the most exciting thing about this is the network of those people, uh, of those people like uh, for example, we have here in Guatemala that are forming the representative offices. And, and right now I'm on the travel here in Central America. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for all these beautiful places which uh, are either starting under, uh, under the diaspora kind of movement of Liberland and there are different villages that are being built here or there are simply representative offices pushing the recognition of Liberland forward. And even here, in Guatemala, there are many hundreds of people that apply for citizenship and we are trying to help them uh, to get through the process and, and become, become citizens at the end. So that's another thing you need to have. You need to have a population. You actually need to have quite a lot of people that support your cause. And, and many people have tried to start a country in past. Uh, for example, the Onassis family has put enormous energy into starting a, a new country. And for example, Donald Trump was also thinking about starting his own country before before he ran for the president of United States. But it's not that simple. You actually need to have a nation. That means you need to have a, a group of people uh, which act as a nation, right? And that's, that's the, the, the duck test, the country duck test, the nation duck test. If it, if it uh, walks like a duck, if it makes sounds like a duck, then it's a duck. And, and Liberland does have a great society of all these all these people around the world that are forming companies they are forming cultural events uh, they, are, they have recently formed university that's why i'm also excited uh, to be here at the francisco marroquin university and i hope there will be a strong uh, partnership between the free university of, of liberland and the francisco marroquin university so when you have that kind of group of people that have a strong attachment to the piece of territory, then, then you are fulfilling yet another criteria that, that is very important part of the country building process. So you have to have a territory, you have to have a government, uh, you have to have a population, uh, and all these, all these factors basically come together. The biggest issue that we are struggling with right now in Liberland, but 
to be honest, not, it's not the biggest issue really. Uh, but let's say it's the biggest technical issue is, is the access to the territory right now. With Liberland, uh, it has been formed on the territory which was not claimed by Croatia or Serbia. Yet Croatia basically from, from the 14th day of its existence when we started the country started to block the access to this territory. They haven't started to claim the territory yet they have prevented anybody from accessing it. And uh, from our perspective, it's not that bad because it is actually a kind of security for the territory itself. So if somebody else wanted to come inside of Liberland and start a new country there, he would be deterred by the Croatian police. But from our perspective, of course, it, it makes us a couple problems with the development of the country itself. But on the other hand, it's not, not the most important part of the, the puzzle. And there is this Chicago Journal of uh, international law and Michigan Journal of International Law, actually, that go deeply into this topic. The fact that Croatia doesn't claim this territory and at the same time they are by force preventing people from settling it makes Liberland a legally uh, functional entity according to the international law. That doesn't mean that when we don't fully fulfill that criteria uh, that we are not a country, right? Uh, and right now, actually, I'm, I'm right from Latin America. I'm heading back to Liberland to celebrate uh, the sixth anniversary of Liberland. We will be on the boats next to Liberland. We are actually building a permanent settlement right on the shores of Liberland, ready to be able to settle that piece of land. And it's kind of crazy when you imagine that there is 600,000 Liberlanders, uh, there is a couple million Croatian. This piece of land it has never been used. Uh, by anybody for any any bigger economical activity it has actually been unclaimed or it was uh, left alone by Serbia and never accepted into the territory of Croatia. And the, the, the thing that we want to do there is something, something I would say fantastic in a sense that we want to experiment with how far we can get uh, with the level of the human freedom. Uh, and, and we know very well that the more freedom people have, and the less power the government has, the more prosperous the society it, it creates. We know also that it's important uh, to have the, the rule of law, the, the system in which, in which, of course, the criminal elements of society are, are somehow taken care of. Uh, and that's why, by the way, those are the main things that Liberland is, is taking care of. Those are the, the fundamentals of our constitution. We only want to take care of security inside of the territory, justice and foreign affairs and leave the rest to the free market. Liberland is actually completely forbidden uh, to take organize, uh, for example, education. The, the fact that there is this free university of Liberland doesn't come from any law or any from, from any state interference. Uh, Liberland is also forbidden to organize the medical system. We really believe that the private sector is better in organizing the, the medical system. Uh, and we are, unlike, for example, other countries are not going to try to monopolize the, the market of vaccines or prevent people from selling respirators, etc. And I really believe that Liberland would be a good example how this crazy pandemic that, Liber that, that the world is going through would be handled in Liberland. So when you have all these uh, things put together, and I think that that's very much relevant uh, to the 21st century, the, the big thing that you need is a full transparency. And this is the biggest project that we are taking on right now. We are building a blockchain governance uh, based on the latest blockchain technology. Uh, and I, I probably many of you are, are already big supporters of Bitcoin. Berlin has, has, has received a lot of publicity recently for being the first sovereign country to adopt Bitcoin as a reserve currency or as a national currency. But we have this new, whole new world of, of decentralized systems. And I mean, Ethereum is probably a good example, but now there is this proof of stake mechanisms, which is a very relevant to the way that the, the national governments are, are working and how they're built. And we have decided to work with the Polkadot open source system with their substrate, that's how it's called, uh, to put together our constitution on blockchain, meaning we want to put all of these um, all of these services that I've mentioned actually on a blockchain in a completely transparent way. Some countries are talking about implementing blockchain on, for example, the rent, land registry or in, in medical sector, but 
we are not that much interested in that. We are actually interested in applying a completely transparent and, and, and super efficient system of, of governance directly to the, to the running of the country itself. That means the budget will be on blockchain. Uh, the Congress will be on blockchain. That means all the, all the re resolutions by, by the justice, uh, by the courts will be on blockchain. And we really want to build a system of decentralized courts. Uh, all the companies that are currently in Liberland will also move to blockchain and they will be able to issue shares on Liberland blockchain. And, and because this Polkadot ecosystem is, is really, I would say, well developing, we would be also able to keep the privacy of these companies at the same time as, as running them with a high fidelity in terms of, for example, keeping the shares, etc. So I would say this is actually one of the biggest elements that, that can be a big uh, I would say ch ch game changer in, in the whole development of Liberland. Uh, as you have seen, Bitcoin has become the third biggest currency uh, at the same level like the Japanese yuan, uh, a little bit smaller than the American dollar by now or two times smaller. Uh, so it has become a major player itself. And now all these other ecosystems have grown to the size of other countries, the Polkadot or Ethereum. Uh, it's amazing how, how huge, uh, I would say, interest they have brought. And now what we are doing, we're combining this world of cryptocurrency with the world of building a very free society on a piece of land where I think the freedom is very much needed. And we have this economic study where, where uh, it was put together by Libek, and I hope many other reputable institutions will follow. So this economic study, which was put together by Libek, argues uh, that the, the, the amount of economic energy that we could add to the whole region equals to almost 1% of GDP a year. And it's, it's not just, of course, Liberland. You can see that, that Hong Kong has boosted the whole development of China and, and inspired a great growth, basically transformed a whole China into small free zones and, and very free areas, uh, which in turn turned the whole China into a, I would say, a, a slight, seriously uh, a big superpower, economic superpower, which uh, has recently outpaced even the US economy. So what Liberland uh, is hoping to do is also to inspire uh, the good old Europe to turn itself in a, a freer direction to inspire and, and lower the taxes uh, and, and deregulate. Uh, that is actually the mission of Liberland. We want to make sure that we, we run Liberland as a good example, but we will also boost the economy of other countries indirectly by bringing a lot of economic interest from around the world. And there are a couple very interesting things about this in regards to the development, physical development of Liberland itself. We do have more than 1,200 architects that applied for citizenship of Liberland as well. And one of them was also Patrick Schumacher, the, the director of Zahari, one of the most renowned architectural studios. Uh, they have recently finished the Beijing airport, for example, and they have beautiful buildings all around the world. And with his support, uh, we are running a architectural competition uh, that will gather the interest uh, and that already gathered interest of more than 80 different architectural teams and we are actually going to show how Liberland itself will be developed. But there is one more cherry on the top to that story uh, that the whole thing is actually going to happen on a virtual reality platform. So visitors or investors or citizens will be able to interact in that virtual reality space uh, that will be created to present all these great architectural plans created by uh, by the, the, the architectural community. So I would say, you know, there are huge opportunities which Liberland can bring to the whole region. We just need to be able to sell it better uh, to, our, uh, to our neighbors. And we have been, I would say, quite successful in selling the idea in Serbia. Serbia stated at the very beginning, they don't mind creation of Liberland on this territory. Uh, I would say we have also received a nice support by the Minister of Economy of Vojvodina, which is the sovereign or, or autonomous region inside of Serbia. And uh, we have actually opened up a free trade zone 
together last year, which allows Liberland companies uh, to be able to trade already through this free trade zone without any customs or taxes, which might be a, an interesting thing for you if you want to be more economically active in Europe uh, than with Liberland company and with Liberland e-residency program. Uh, you are able to actually uh, enter that market and, and uh, enjoy also great logistics uh, that is being put together uh, by that logistics center that is being built there. So we do have that uh, over there. We are also building a small Liberland village in Serbia uh, that will be a, a small scale Liberland uh, in, a, in a sense that, that it will be manifested in physical reality. We are building a floating Liberland also next to Liberland. And by the way, there are beautiful beaches inside of Liberland and around Liberland. So if you're coming to join us, for example, for the anniversary on the 13th of April, or if you're coming to join us uh, on the 13th of August uh, for the floating man festival, you will be able to enjoy a beautiful nature. And, and, and a great community of people, of early Bitcoin ad adopters, of, of great thinkers, professors even from this university are coming to, to join us uh, for these two events. Uh, so that's what, that's what I'm talking about, having a vibrant community that is building, building Liberland and, and pushing it forward. I would uh, conclude basically by, by saying that uh, I hope Liberland does inspire other people uh, to build their communities, build their even countries, uh, become basically from the crazy world that we are living in in many ways, become independent, uh, push yourselves to, to adopt the cryptocurrencies if you haven't done that, uh, because that really helps you to, to become a free, free in this crazy world, which is dominated by by regulation, by taxation, by uh, enormous amount of pressure now being put through, for example, pandemics. Uh, and of course, join us and become Liberlander as well, because the more citizenships you have, the better. It is a fairly easy process. It takes a couple of minutes. And uh, right now we have also started a regular passport uh, program uh, very recently. Uh, so it, it, is, it is a procedure with, which only takes a couple of minutes and we will be very happy to have you on board and, and introduce you to our local representatives, help you to find your place in our community. And I believe it can be also a great benefit uh, to people that are able to, to operate their businesses in Liberland and find new friends and find new, I mean, we had many marriages already as well in Liberland. So uh, thank you very much again for giving me the space uh, to present. And I'm more than happy to, to jump into the question and answer session. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there is one from Facebook here. Uh, it is, uh, what is the most challenging objection to Liberland that you have heard or read? I would say it is the fact that we're breaking the paradigm, you know, that there is this kind of status quo that countries kind of have to be built through some sort of conflict or and that's the fun part where Liberland has not been formed on anybody else's territory we actually don't have any conflict our 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 plan is totally in line with Croatia's version of the border right and yet Croatia is actually the one that is obstructing our development but we are actually on the side of Croatia's version of the border in which Liberland is not part of the Croatia in this, in this border dispute. So if that's one fact, and of course the fact that we are building a tax haven or tax heaven, it's also some, somehow a big problem for many politicians. You know, some people like the tax hells more than tax heavens. But uh, I think it is one of those things, it's very difficult to fight a positive project. In a sense, we are building something and they're trying to Kind of tear it down right but we are here you know it's it's like bitcoin the more the more you fight it the more attention it gets and bigger it grows and and that's probably one of the things which which really you know uh, is helping liberland as well right and the more attention we received in the fight that it, it's it's form of recognition if if you open up that brochure that uh, that is very recently now published on, on liberland and you can see all the hundreds of representatives and the, the members of government and, and all the projects that we are developing, it actually starts with the quote 
by the uh, foreign minister of Croatia uh, that, that you know the, the liberal and has the, the the liberal idea has already grown too big. And it's form of recognition, right? When the foreign minister of Croatia starts to worry about the growth of liberal, it is a recognition in itself. And if, if for example, uh, Czech ministry warns about the activities of liberal, uh, and it's again the foreign minister, they never talk about uh, private individuals. They are the foreign ministry. They only deal with countries, right? So whenever we actually get on the level when the foreign ministry start to deal with the issue, we are becoming recognized one way, one way or another by other states, even though it, it might not be in the positive way, right? But still, it's a form of recognition. It's a process. It's a process. Uh, this is a question from Darren Orbo. Thank you. And it is, what do you need to get citizenship of Liberland? So right now, we basically start with this e-residency process. We get to know you, make sure that you're not a terrorist or, or a criminal, which, uh, you know, I think it's it's good to know when you're building a new society that you don't have malicious actors coming in. And it's, it takes a couple of days. We just tried it. Uh, we had a shipment coming from our office in Guatemala. It takes four days to deliver. It's amazing. I was surprised that it's so fast. So you get your e-residency e card. And from that on, you actually get to have an interview uh, with, with our representative. And we figure out how you can best fit into the community. And we figure out the best path for citizenship. And right now, there is this kind of uh, unwritten rule that people usually have to call it 5,000 marriages through their activity or through voluntary taxes or, or through other means to become citizens. And usually, if people stick with us and help us push things forward for a year or so, they become, they become citizen as well. Uh, I have a, another question here. Uh, have you faced issues with citizens of Liberland who do not fully understand the principles and want to change them? Well, I think that's a really good question, you know, that, uh, but, but, you know, that's also like we libertarians are usually complete minority, right? Uh, and, and we are kind of hard-headed in, in the way we think about it. But funnily enough, if you start to live in libertarian society, you know, even you, you are not completely, I would say, ideologically on that, you, you still go with the flow, right? That's the fun part where the where it's much easier to push different things, even though there could be some people that don't understand exactly, they, they're actually going going with the flow and, and that problem doesn't doesn't really exist so far. And there is another important issue which I haven't mentioned, and those are the principles of our constitution. So they're very hard coded. It's difficult to change the constitution. Like it would be really a pain for legislative process to, for example, install a new taxes. It would be like there was somebody would have to basically take over all the institutions in Liberland to be able to do that. And the only tax, by the way, which is kind of allowed in the future is the property tax, uh, and meaning the, the land tax, actually, because that was something we were thinking that it could be good to have in order to optimize the way the land is utilized. So nobody buys it just for investment for the future, and it does have to produce some economic activity. Uh, but a part of that, all the taxes are actually forbidden by the Constitution, and, and it, would, it would take a a public veto to overcome it would take the veto of senate it would take a a two-thirds i know three-fourths of the congress to vote for so all these principles that liberal art is built on are actually guarded by many other institutions uh, that are that are securing that it would be difficult to change it even though there would be majority of people that would like to change it thank you um this question is kind of related to the one that you answered before, but I, I will I will ask it because you may want to to share details. Uh, Andrea Martinez de Alvarado asks, uh, would you ask for criminal records to any person that wants citizenship, as other countries do? Well, we we do ask for that. We don't ask for the proof. Uh, we actually just we, we ask for it in the questionnaire from beginning, and. Uh, you know, I've got a couple of funny stories about that. So it's, for example, prevented Roger Ware, one of our, um, I would say, major supporter uh, to apply for citizenship because he was worried he was selling some fireworks in the United States. Uh, but of course, if it's if it's not a serious crime, it's not a problem. You know, if it's like possession of marijuana or something like that, it's not it's not, not a, a deal breaker. Uh, 
so we ask for that and we also then check independently if that person is not in some on some sort of wanted list uh, because that also happened to us already right like we we have people that are kind of trying to get a second citizenship just because they're going to jail for some serious uh, criminal offense and it also happened to us already and we were able to prevent that person from getting the liberal and documents to able, able to so yes uh yes we, we do check and i think it's healthy to when you're building a society like this we're not building a a monero right we're not we're building a trust uh a society based on trust and, and when you meet other liberal lender uh you know we should be quite sure that he's not gonna mess with your money or with your business this is a question by Adriana Peralta. It is, uh, why build a country from scratch? Uh, why not negotiate a land like Hong Kong did? Well, if you know the history of Hong Kong, it, there was a, a big backing by, by the United Kingdom, right? And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not that easy. I mean, it, it apparently is much easier to build a country from scratch uh, than to try to change existing country first of all right that that's a difficult one uh, because you have to change the minds of the people uh, and it, it, it is very difficult to buy piece of sovereign land uh, it, it has become almost impossible and and again like people like Onazi's family tried it they have been traveling and talking with all these dictators and and small Pacific islands and they were trying to buy a piece of land with sovereignty because there is also a strong backlash against the entities that would allow this to happen right like the, there would be this diplomatic community that would push these countries that would start doing this i am very positive about the creation of the free trade zones and the zd zones for example right now in honduras i think it's extremely positive development in, in the change of the mindset of the existing uh, existing uh, powers that be that these things are happening and and we know very well that now there is like for example free private cities initiative uh, which I'm, I'm a big supporter of which are traveling around the world and and looking for countries that are willing to implement a freer jurisdictions inside of their own jurisdictions yet under the control uh, there is this experiment now in saudi arabia as well uh, which has not uh, developed very well so far but i hope it's going to do better uh, you know, there are these African countries that are experimenting with building small Dubais inside of their jurisdictions. So yes, I'm a great supporter of that, but we have went a different path. We decided we're not going to ask or negotiate uh, with anybody. We're just doing our own thing. And I think that's the way you build a sovereign country. Uh, this is a question from Angel Chamo. Uh, Mr. President, is the future of governance private, according to your experience? Well, this is a, a, a good question, right? Like the way we, we basically uh, give back to the taxpayers is that by giving them merits and merits are literally, and it's a part of, of the liberal, right? Like people are becoming shareholders of the of the state itself. And I think that's, that's a way to go. Like the more taxes you pay, the bigger your share in the society will be the bigger your say in, is, is in the society. And it's interesting to see that some countries actually wait, went, went vice versa, like Panama was kind of a private entity and become a republic later on. But I really believe there is a, a especially now with all these blockchain governances and these proof of stake uh, blockchains that, that are, they are very successful. Uh, there is now this time when, when the countries itself could be kind of tokenized and governed governed uh, in a very kind of corporate way in, in, in a way but still having all these elements of the state at the same time thank you there's another question here any feedback from the people from silicon valley and these big uh, companies like facebook amazon and uh... i mean you know there was this great time when when uh, facebook when liberland started and we had all these hundreds of thousands of people joining on the Facebook page uh, gave me the godlike feature to be able to manage all everything that had liberal and in the name and I was thinking you know is it is it is it something that they gave me uh, or they give everybody who becomes popular or they gave me because they want me to help to 
to sort out the great interest that was there, right? And, and I, everything that had Liberland in the name, I could like literally delete or edit, no matter who created it at the time. And there was this 14 days. And then they decided my personal page has become too popular. I received like 30,000 friendship requests. So they turned the friendship request into likes and they deleted my personal profile. So, uh, and, and I, I recently actually uh, met the, the representative that is responsible from Google for relations with other governments. Uh, so I hope there will be some interesting, interesting uh, talks with that. Of course, they're a bit conservative, these big Silicon Valley giants. Giants, but I, I also think you know we will we will attract them sooner or later because Liberal really wants to be the most popular jurisdictions for any kind of business. We have two more questions, probably three, and the next to twelve minutes. Okay, to, to have a general idea. Uh, this is a question from YouTube. It's considering Liberland is such a small territory. Is there a limited number of people who can apply to become citizens? Uh, Yes, actually it is uh, because because we we have limited number of merits. Uh, that, that's because the merits are connected to the land itself. And uh, if you if you divide that number, which we are now considering to be 70 million, uh, that means uh, there will be 10 merits per square meter. Uh, then, if if one citizenship is 5,000 merits, right, then you have roughly 14,000. People that can become citizens under under that number. Um, Andrea Martinez de Areval de Alvarado asks: If someone calls for sedition, would it be penalized in Liberland? Well, I really recommend this book by Prince Hans Adam, uh, which uh, argues, and in Liechtenstein they have this: that any kind of uh, village inside of Liechtenstein can declare an independent country. By the way, I went there and, and just was interested how that works, and it. But I found out that the debate has never ever started because Liechtenstein is really providing good services for a good price. Uh, you know, we, we don't have that built in, in our constitution, uh, but uh, it's, it's actually a doable thing, right? Like Liberland is really small, uh, so dividing it into sub countries is, is a bit of a, uh, would be like a kind of a technical challenge. And it's something we can still add. I will look into it. Actually. I promise I will look into the. The book that Prince Hans Adam has written uh, and, and try to include some of his ideas about this into the constitution as well and try to push it with the, our committee. It's a great book, by the way, The State uh, for the 21st Millennia by Prince Hans Adam, the Prince of Liechtenstein. Okay. Um, we've got another question here. Uh, is there any list of priorities for Liberland currently? What, what does Liber, Liberland need? Uh, as a list of I would priorities. say right now the biggest priority is to finish the constitution. Uh, it is uh, and and build this blockchain ecosystem. So that's a priority number one. Uh, second priority is to be very strongly present in the territory or around the territory. So that's why we have this floating man festival. We have this floating Liberland concept of, of boats around Liberland. We have this village. We have these also uh, diaspora villages around the world. So, so Liberlanders are actually physically visible and they're active. And they're also the free trade zone is an important part of it. Like you can see the Liberland business is actually operating from very close, uh, very close from, from Liberland and I don't know, selling, selling goods to all around the world. So that's, that's a very important part. Uh, if you are somebody who just doesn't like it in their country, I can tell you that right now the community is really growing. Around, around Liberland is growing and the businesses are growing. So you can actually relocate there and, and start your business and enjoy this free trade zone uh, ecosystem, for example. And the, the third thing is, of course, the recognitions, I would say, to get more uh, kind of acceptable by the, by the community and by other states is an important part of the process that we are going through. And I'm very happy that we are actually quite successful. We have been much more successful than any similar project in past. Uh, well, Mr. President, uh, I am sure that we have learned a lot about how to build a country without breaking the principle of non-aggression, uh, also based on freedom and uh, the rule of law. So thank you, Mr. President. We 
wish you the best. Thank you very much, Luis. It's always great to be here and I hope we will come up with some great ways how to collaborate on, on some of the projects, especially on the university level. Right? Hoy, el mundo busca cursos en línea. Hoy, el mundo sigue las tendencias del mercado. Hoy, el mundo necesita emprendedores. Hoy más que nunca, el conocimiento se dispersó y la Universidad Francisco Marroquín no cerró. Se multiplicó en diversos hogares.